Welcome to the Lectorio Podcast. In today's episode, we'll be diving into head-to-toe assessment. Let's get started. Welcome, everyone. Today, we're diving into one of the most essential skills that every nurse needs to master. From the moment you step into a patient's room to the final documentation of your findings. We're about to break down everything from vital signs to detailed physical assessments. So grab a coffee, relax, and let's get started. Think of this as your practical guide, where we mix both the theory behind each step and the hands-on strategies that you'll use every day on your shift. Today, we're going to dive deep into each part of the assessment and share practical tips that make the whole process efficient and effective. Let's begin at the very start the initial impression. When you walk into a patient's room, the very first thing you do is what we call eyeballing the patient. This initial visual inspection is crucial. Look at the patient's general appearance, assess their level of consciousness, orientation, and overall demeanor. You want to notice little details. For example, is the patient alert and awake? Are their eyes tracking you? Does their skin have any unusual tones like pallor or cyanosis? These quick visual cues help set your baseline before you even pick up your stethoscope. Exactly. And one tip that I always share with students is to compare observations quickly. For instance, when you check the eyes, observe both sides of the face. Differences in pupil size or any abnormal discolorations can be a red flag, especially in cases like a stroke, where one side of the body may present differently than the other. Maintaining this comparative mindset not only initially, but throughout the entire assessment, is key to ensuring you don't miss those subtle yet critical differences in a patient's condition. Now that we've got that initial observation down, let's move on to gathering the vital signs. This part of the assessment is all about precision and accuracy. You need to measure the patient's blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, and oxygen saturation as soon as you get into the room. These numbers are essential because they give you a snapshot of the patient's hemodynamic status and overall stability. During this process, it's important to directly ask the patient about any pain they might be experiencing, especially considering their reason for being in the hospital. And don't forget, as you're gathering these vital signs, that every measurement you take becomes part of the patient's baseline. It's your foundational data. For instance, If the patient has a history of hypertension or diabetes, even slight deviations in these numbers can signal significant changes in their condition. Always document these findings meticulously at the bedside, and if your facility has a computer system available, enter your notes right there in real time. Not only does this keep the information accurate, but it also facilitates better handoffs during shift changes. That's a great point. Moving on from vital signs, let's talk about the respiratory and cardiovascular systems. When you're assessing these systems, you'll use both inspection and auscultation as your primary methods. For respiratory assessment, you begin by looking for normal chest rise and fall. This helps you confirm that the breathing is symmetric and effortless. Then with your stethoscope, you carefully listen to the lung sounds across different lobes of the lungs. You're listening for crackles, wheezes, diminished or abnormal breath sounds, which might indicate conditions like pneumonia, asthma, or even a collapsed lung. Right, and it's really vital here to compare the sounds on both sides. For example, if you hear diminished lung sounds on one side versus the other, that discrepancy could be an early indicator of a more serious issue, like a pneumothorax or atelectasis following trauma. Similarly, when you assess the cardiovascular system, You're not only listening for the rate and rhythm of the heart, but you're also checking for any murmurs, extra beats, or irregular patterns. Your alertness to these details is crucial as they guide you in making timely decisions about further diagnostic tests or interventions. As we dig deeper into the assessment, let's focus on the abdominal exam, which covers both the gastrointestinal GI and genitourinary GU systems. When it comes to assessing the abdomen, you'll follow a systematic process. Start with inspection, move carefully into auscultation to listen for normal bowel sounds, and then if needed, proceed with percussion and palpation. The order here is key. It's important to listen to the natural bowel sounds before you perform any palpation, because once you start touching, you might stimulate extra sounds, which can confuse your assessment. Exactly. 
and while palpating, keep an eye out for any areas where the patient tenses up or shows signs of pain. This might indicate tenderness, masses, or even underlying inflammation. It's also important to ask the patient about their recent bowel movements and urination patterns, because any abnormalities there, like lack of bowel movements or difficulties with urination, can provide additional clues about the overall health of their GI and GU systems. Next up, we need to assess the musculoskeletal system. And here we're really looking at muscle strength, joint mobility, and even skin temperature and moisture quality on the extremities. During this part of the assessment, you want to check peripheral pulses, capillary refill, and note any signs of edema or swelling. This is critical, not just for limb function, but also to evaluate the overall circulation. For instance, palpable pulses should be strong and bounding. Any deviation from that can be a sign of vascular compromise. I like to think of this portion of the assessment as a dynamic interaction with the patient. It's not just about checking boxes, it's about engaging with your patient to see how well they're moving and if there's any pain or discomfort during movement. Sometimes, during our assessments, we have patients who might have difficulty moving their limbs, and that could be due to underlying neurological issues, joint problems, or even side effects from IV medication. This is why it's key always to keep an analytical mind and try to correlate what you're seeing with the patient's history. Speaking of neurological issues, let's transition into the neurological system evaluation. This part often includes checking the patient's level of consciousness, pupil response, and sensory functions. You'll be looking for any deviations in how the pupils react to light, differences in reflex responses, and overall muscle strength during passive and active movements. For instance, if one pupil appears different from the other, it could be a sign of a neurological problem that might need further workup. It's all about precision and keen observation. When you test for strength, have the patient push against your hand or hold a squeeze, and then assess for symmetry between both sides. Sensory testing is just as important. Ask the patient if they feel the same sensation on both sides. Any noticeable differences can signal issues like nerve compression or cerebrovascular events. And remember, even though this part may seem straightforward, subtle changes in neurological function can sometimes be the first sign of a significant problem, so don't rush it. Now let's touch on the integumentary system, the skin. The skin is the largest organ in the body, and throughout the head-to-toe exam, you should be constantly checking it. Look for signs of pressure ulcers, wounds, lacerations, unusual bruising, or any other skin abnormalities. Even small changes in the skin can indicate systemic issues, such as infection or poor perfusion. Always document any findings, and if you notice anything out of the ordinary, be sure to report it promptly to the healthcare team. Absolutely. And when you're inspecting the skin, don't forget to consider any devices that might be attached to the patient, IV lines, catheters, drains, and even oxygen tubing. Ensuring that these are in place, secure, and not causing complications like redness, swelling, or infection at the insertion site is a crucial part of the assessment. Proper documentation at every step not only protects the patient, but also shields you by providing a detailed record of your observations. Documentation is something I can't emphasize enough. Whether it's a small note about a slight change in skin color or the specifics of your auscultation findings for the heart and lungs, every detail matters. Recording your findings in real time, either on the bedside computer or in your chart, ensures continuity of care during shift reports, helps track changes over time, and can be critical if the patient's condition suddenly changes. Right, and think about it from an interdisciplinary perspective. Your notes might lead to earlier interventions by physicians, consultations with specialists like physical therapists or speech therapists, and ultimately better outcomes for your patients. It's all about keeping the communication lines open and the information flowing seamlessly across the care team. Absolutely. Now let me share some practical tips that will help you streamline and remember the head-to-toe assessment during a busy shift. First, always be systematic. Develop your own method or sequence that you follow consistently with every patient. This not only prevents you from missing important details, but it also makes it easier to compare your findings during subsequent assessments. 
For instance, always start at the head and work your way down. This ensures that you cover all the body systems without skipping any critical steps. And don't forget the importance of side-by-side -side comparison. Whether it's checking lung sounds or muscle strength in the arms, comparing the right side to the left can reveal discrepancies that tell you if something is off. In many cases, differences between sides might be the first indication of an underlying condition, such as a unilateral stroke or localized organ damage. Integrating this habit into your practice will greatly enhance the quality of your assessments. Another key element is patient communication. As you move through the exam, explain what you're doing before you do it. A simple, I'm just going to listen to your heart now, or let me check your breathing sounds, breathing sounds, goes a long way in making sure the patient feels comfortable and aware of what is happening. This not only builds rapport, but also decreases anxiety especially for those new to the hospital environment who might be uneasy about the process. Communication skills are essential. Always ask open-ended questions once you're done with the examination. How are you feeling now? Or do you feel any difference compared to earlier? This invites the patient to share their experience and it can highlight subjective changes that might not be immediately obvious from your observations. When patients feel involved in their care, they tend to be more cooperative and less stressed, which can ultimately improve outcomes. Let's now bring everything together and talk about how this assessment fits into the overall care of your patient. The goal of the head-to-toe assessment is to not only identify issues early, but also to establish a comprehensive baseline. This baseline is crucial when comparing future assessments. If a patient's condition starts to change, you'll have accurate records to refer to which aids in quick decision-making. It's the cornerstone of effective patient monitoring, guiding both your clinical judgment and the interests of the interdisciplinary team. That's a really important point. When you know your patient's baseline, any deviations become immediately apparent. For example, a sudden drop in oxygen saturation or a change in the heart rhythm can signal critical issues that require rapid intervention. In short, a thorough initial assessment doesn't just help in identifying current problems, it also lays the groundwork for detecting any new complications before they escalate. Before we wrap up, I wanna stress the importance of ongoing practice. The more you perform a head-to-toe assessment, the more intuitive and efficient it becomes. I encourage you to use every opportunity, whether it's on your clinical rotation, during simulation labs, or while managing your caseload on the floor to hone these skills. Remember, the assessment is not a one-off task. It's a continuous process that mirrors the patient's journey from admission to discharge. And keep in mind, every shift is a new beginning. Each time you go into a patient's room, repeat your full system check, even if you're familiar with them from previous assessments. Conditions can evolve rapidly, and a simple observation in the morning can be entirely different by the afternoon. This vigilance is what makes you not just a good nurse, but a great one, always proactive, and always thorough. To sum up, today we covered the essence of the head-to-toe assessment. We started with that critical first impression, eyeballing the patient to gauge overall appearance and consciousness, then moved into accurately taking vital signs to set a baseline. We explored the respiratory and cardiovascular assessments, emphasizing the need to compare both sides and listen intently for abnormal sounds. We walk through the abdominal exam, underlining the importance of the correct order, inspection, auscultation, percussion, and finally palpation. We then discuss the musculoskeletal, neurological, and integumentary systems, all of which play a vital role in your comprehensive patient assessment. Finally, we wrapped up with practical tips on clear documentation, patient communication, and maintaining a systematic approach throughout your shift. I couldn't agree more. The key takeaways are to stay systematic, always compare your findings, and document everything in real time. These best practices help ensure that you never miss a subtle change in a patient's condition, and they allow for quick, effective communication within your healthcare team. Don't underestimate the power of a well-conducted head-to-toe exam. It's the foundation of quality patient care. Before we conclude, here are some final tips. Develop your own rhythm for the exam. Adjust your pace based on the patient's condition 
and always be mindful of comfort and safety. Every detail, from checking skin integrity in places where devices are inserted to ensuring that patients feel included in their care, builds the trust necessary for excellent patient outcomes. As you practice more, you'll gain that natural flow where each step seamlessly connects to the next, making your assessments both thorough and efficient. And remember, don't be afraid to ask for help or to clarify details with your colleagues when you're starting out. The learning process never really stops in nursing, and every patient provides a new opportunity to fine-tune your skills. Collaboration and clear communication are as much a part of the assessment as your technical abilities. So whether you're in the middle of a busy medical surgical unit or on your first day in the critical care environment, the head-to-toe assessment is your roadmap to understanding the patient's story. It's the narrative that tells you where they are medically and helps guide every decision, from immediate interventions to long-term care planning. Stay curious, be systematic, and always aim for clarity in your notes. This practice is what truly sets apart excellent patient care. As we wrap up, I want to encourage everyone to practice these assessments regularly. Take time after each shift to reflect on your findings and don't be discouraged by mistakes. They're just stepping stones to becoming a confident, skilled nurse. Whether you find that one extra thing through careful palpation or pick up an abnormal sound by meticulously comparing both sides, every detail counts. This holistic approach not only ensures patient safety, but also builds your clinical acumen over time. That's right. In closing, the head-to-toe assessment is more than just a checklist. It's an art, a blend of science, empathy, and communication. It allows you to build a detailed picture of your patient's health, one that empowers you to detect changes early and intervene appropriately. So next time you're in the patient's room, remember the steps we discussed today, apply these methods, and continue to refine your skills with every patient encounter. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the head-to-toe assessment. We hope you found these tips useful and that you're now feeling more confident about performing a systematic patient exam. With Lectorio, you have experts' guidance by your side, anywhere, anytime.